Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. J Ball! J Ball! I wore, I wore my bathrobe. So right now, you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah. j Ball. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact talk for Impact fans right here on the Impact Lounge. I am Trent, along with my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. Come go over here. You know, Trent, all I got to say to you is fuck Skype. Fuck Skype. Well, Kyle it sounds like shit, and uh, you guys can tell he's uh, he's using a, a, a wonky version of Skype because Skype screwed him, but he's still here. Kyle, you made it on... That's all we care about. You're still here. I'm doing the show through my cell phone. I'm doing the show through my fucking cell phone because Trent, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, we joked on the show for weeks about how I get my impact. You know, I I go to some deep, dark armpits on the internet, places that aren't uh, good for the computer health. And Trent, I, I, I believe I destroyed my laptop. Our podcast is very well over. Oh, God, here's the thing. Impact is making this damn show available every goddamn nook and cranny of this of this world, and here you are still going to the deep, dark corners of the internet to find it, screwing your computer and our podcast in the meantime. But God damn it, Kyle. Well, while you're unreliable, I got a reliable a third to join us here this week. We locked him in. He's back by popular demand. The one, the only, the legendary, mind you. J Bone, Jason, J Bone, say hello to the people here. Hello to the people here. I mean, hey, what's up? <laughs> J Bone is back by popular you demand. Got your bathrobe on, bro? Uh, are we, uh, we're doing bathrobes tonight, right? I got mine on. I figured, you know, J Bone's coming back. Put the robes on. Oh, uh, mine's in the wash. You guys can robe it up all you want. That's good. I'm, <laughs> I'm just wearing <laughs> boxer shorts. And that's just, we're going to start this off with the other J Bone tradition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the other one? A call, cracking J-Bone. a cold one. <laughs> Flap nuts. <laughs> hey, J-Bone, let him know about the gimmick. He, he has no idea. Uh, yeah, give me, give, me, give, me the, give me the lowdown here, J-Bone. What are we doing here? Uh, I, I actually haven't uh, had much beer in the house lately, but uh, on a pretty consistent basis, whenever I was live uh, doing, you know, on YouTube, I'd uh, crack a cold one. And I'd go through one or two while I was live. So yeah, that was that's that's the tradition. Usually it's a, usually it's a you know I I'm I'm a I'm a cheap bastard. So I I drink some cheap beer. I usually get a thirty pack of hams and I go through a couple of hams on the show. Hams the beer refreshing. Well, EJ, well, you're from the land of beer and cheese, my friend. So uh, it's Brew yeah, City, baby. Brew City itself, man. So. Uh, uh, yeah. Kyle, you should go to Bruce City one day. You should go visit J Bone. He comes from the land where beer is popular, made popular. Yeah, I, I want to go to Wisconsin, try some of that cheese. Oh, dude, cheese curd, J Bone. Tell him about the cheese curds, man. Come on, oh, the, come the, on. The, the cheese curds at Culver's are, are choice, man, and and uh, the brats. Oh, oh, dude. I just I just got a new new grill this last summer. I throw some burgers and brats and have some hams and, and throw some cheese curds in the oven and have a potty. <laughs> Kyle, you ever had a cheese curd out in the Long Island, man? You ever had a cheese curd? You know what, uh, Trent, I've told you before here on the podcast that uh, I am, uh, I've, I've struggled with some Buffalo Wild Wings addictions throughout the years. And uh, <laughs> when I do relapse into Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, yeah, I, I go for those cheese curds. They're fantastic. We're going to try to get Kyle out here. I think we'll probably do a GoFundMe to get Kyle out here in the summer. One of these one of these days, sometime this summer, Impact Lounge, GoFundMe to get Kyle out to Chicago. And uh, Chicago is not too far from where you're at, J-Bone. You're about an hour away, hour oh, and no. a half-ish. So uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do something here. Kyle needs to experience this Midwest. <laughs> That, but, uh, that, that, uh, oh my God, it looks like a freaking nuclear winter between our town and, uh, yours. Yeah. Trent. Jeez nice, Louise. The, the, the freaking 40, 40 foot piles of rubble along the freeway. What the? 
<laughs> but you know what is in between our two towns? Kyle, there's a place between where I live and where J-Bone's at. And it's called the Mars Cheese Castle. This oh, is a man. this is a castle of cheese and beer. And it's that's that's what they sell. Every type of goddamn cheese you can imagine is sold at the Mars Cheese Castle. Is that enticing enough for you to start a GoFundMe? <laughs> Teasing me. <laughs> that, that sounds like all of my wildest dreams coming true. It's amazing. <laughs> you have to see it to believe it, man. And uh, Kyle, for up your alley, it is right next to a place called the Bong Recreational Center. <laughs> it's right off the highway, and there's a big sign that says Bong Recreation Center. And uh, if, yeah, true story, guys. Jay Bone, you, you'd appreciate this being a, a Midwestern. Kyle, this is up your alley because, you know, Bong and all. But, uh, I, I was with some people. Activities are none of your business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was with some people driving to Milwaukee, and they go, holy shit, that place is called the Bong Recreation Center. It's a huge sign. We pull over to the side of the highway. They're like, we got to get a picture of this thing. They're first-timers. They're, they're East Coasters like you, Kyle. I, we, we sat at the side of the highway. They're taking a picture. State trooper pulls up behind us, right? <laughs> and, and he goes, and he goes, and I'm thinking, look, I haven't done a drug in my life. I am a straight edge. Kyle busts my chops about this all day long, you know, about being a goody two-shoes. But uh, state trooper pulls up, right? And he's like, uh, what are you guys doing? And I'm like, well, I was taking a picture. You know, these guys are from Boston. They, want, they, they thought it was funny. They go, the guy's like, well, you think, uh, you think drugs are funny? You think, you think you, what, you, yeah, yeah, you weed heads, huh? You, got, you guys getting stoned out here? Is that what's going on? You think a uh, bong is funny? And I go, Oh, you know, officer, it's, you know, bong recreation center. They thought it was funny. We're taking a picture. And the guy's like, huh. So you got any weed on you? What do you, what do you get carrying something there? Huh? You getting a little fucked up today? I go, holy shit, this is really happening to me. You know, this guy's really taking this seriously. He's busting and, uh, your balls. <laughs> oh, dude, this is right there. I mean, Jay, well, you know where it's at. It's right by the cheese castle in Kenosha, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, so, it's on 94 there, yeah. Yeah, and he's giving me shit, right? And he goes, uh, I don't think it's any, I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's, I don't think drugs are funny. And I'm like, officer, I didn't name the thing. You know, it's called the bar and recreation. I didn't put the goddamn <laughs> sign up. What the fuck do you want me to do about this? And the guy's like, give me your light. Dude, he runs the plates. He runs the license of everybody in the car. No, he and actually busted, he busted your balls for real. Eh? Oh my dude, God. <laughs> dude, this is, this is a 30 minute ordeal. Oh, he's thinking, he's not, right? You got jammed up. You thought drugs were funny. You got you jammed up. You're funny, man. But uh, he gives me. I, I would share a story with you about you know marijuana and police officers, except all those end up with me getting handcuffed. So we're not going to share any of those here on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can we can leave those out for you. And then, oh. There might be a statute of limitations on yours, Kyle. We might want to leave those out. But uh, so, dude, he gives us our licenses back. Says, "Get the hell out of my state." I go, "You, I'm thinking of my state. You can't kick me out of Wisconsin. What the hell is this, man? I just took a picture." Anyway, we said fuck that, and we went up to uh, we drove up to Milwaukee anyway. So there screw that go. guy. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, yeah he, he, unless he's unless he's like I'm gonna escort you to the border or some shit. I mean, geez, Louise, yeah. that's that's horrible. Well, yeah, I, I, I total it, impact, folks. Where we just started off ten minutes of speaking nothing of impact wrestling. That's enough. Let's move along here, folks. All right, guys, we are here to break down the March 29th, 2019 episode of Impact Wrestling against all odds. 2019 from the Samstown Casino in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This was the culmination of the Las Vegas taping, so they are on their way out of Las Vegas after this big show. Heading over to Windsor, Ontario, Canada for those tapings where I attended, actually. So I'll throw a little insight on that uh, as we get to those next week. But this was a big one, guys. Against all odds, uh, uh, was a, was used to be a pay-per-view. It used to be a regular monthly February pay-per-view. It's now um, now a super card, which, you know, they took some of the old pay-per-view titles, made them super cards. So that's what we're breaking down here. But before we get into anything else, we go into the YouTube comments. Let me talk to you. Comments from the loungers. Let me talk to you. Comments from the loungers. Let me talk to you. Now, we're going to YouTube. A lot of love for J-Bone this week. Whole oh. lot of love. Whole lot of love, man. Whole lot of love for J-Bone, dude. J-Bone, you were a... Uh... You were a star this week, man. Last week, man. I, I gotta say, people, uh, people turned out to, to for the J Bone here. 
that that made me feel like a million bucks you know it's uh, like i said right before we started you know the last thing thing i want to do is you know uh you know stink up the place when i go on you know but but it felt like you know when you and i did the show last week i i felt like we you know hit one out of the park you know it was pretty cool yeah dude people people here liked you man they were they were happy to happy to have you so i'm like i'm gonna go through a couple comments here and then we'll get out the, the review uh our buddy whoopsie this is uh kyle's neighbor whoopsie he's uh you know they're they're, they're best friends almost just just about on that best friend level over fellow long Islander there what's that we leave, we live at least an hour away from each other but try, you, you keep pushing this idea that we're best friends so i'll go with it whoopsie my Percept- brother perception's <laughs> reality kyle perception's <laughs> reality i mean you you guys are basically neighbors basically <laughs> whoopsie. uh whoopsie says what a gentleman and a scholar j bone Especially when Jay, when he said, and he don't said, spread that, don't spread that around. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, when Jay Bone said, "quote unquote," I miss you, Kyle. As a closing, his closing statement at the end, it brought tears to my eyes. Look at that! You made Whoopsie <laughs> tear up. Whoopsie's a tough guy. You know, he's a he's a long hound. He's a tough guy. So uh, you made Whoopsie tear up, man. That was uh, Kyle. That was because he missed you. Get your Kleenex, folks. Get your Kleenex here. Richard Cartledge says, Richard Cartledge, I think you are on his shit list, Kyle. I don't think he likes you much. <laughs> I don't know. This guy comes on the podcast every week. He disses me even when I'm not on the show. The weeks I'm not on the show, he's still in the comments shitting on me. So, Richard, I want to know. I'm asking you right now, Richard. I know you're listening. I know you got your fingers to the keyboard, and you're already <laughs> halfway through typing up an insult aimed at me. So I- I'm telling you right now, Richard, what's the beef? What's the issue? Maybe we could work through this. I mean, I worked through my issues with Basil, so I think I could work through my issues with anybody. Well, let, let, Richard, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, Richard, I want in the comments. What's the beef here, man? But let's read his, com- let's read his comment here. He says, uh, welcome to the Impact Lounge, J-Bone. You did a good job. Of course, Trent uh, did, as always. And the best part was no Kyle. <laughs> Kylie, he called you Kylie. <laughs> And he says, did you forget about the comments? I did forget comments last week. I was so enthralled in J-Bone being on, I forgot comments. But God damn it, Kyle, he busted your chops right here. Start off hot. Uh, I think that's a fake account. I, I don't see anybody <laughs> could write it. Could it be that Basil is on a fake account called Richard Cartledge? It could be. But uh, he also <laughs> says he doesn't mind OVE having Fulton, but he just doesn't want a big man who no-sells everything. But he says, um, he also says the good episode of Impact overall. The main event was awesome. And I like the addition of Madman Fulton. So far, Fulton's getting some good response. I like that guy. Quick thoughts, guys, on Madman Fulton. What do you guys say? Oh, it's it's awesome. To, you know, I we, you, know, you and I talked about this last week that he's uh, you know spent some time in MLW at the side of Callahan, and I was like, oh man, wouldn't it be awesome if he and um, Oh, now I, I forgot it. I looked it up, you know, over, over the cro- course of the week of the, the other guy. It's it's not um, – I thought his name was Leon White. It's not Leon White. Damn, I'm not going to look it up. Leon, but yeah, Leon White's like Vader. <laughs> that's Vader. It's not Vader. He, he spent some time with uh, Callahan and his, you know, being his uh, right-hand guy, his muscle on that show because it's a different, you know, wrestling universe and such. And I was like, man. If OVE Impact Wrestling could get Madman Fulton, and then he did like a couple house shows, you know, like Twitch specials or whatever, and I was like, okay, if this is happening now. This it's only a matter of time, because the same thing happened with the Rascals. The Rascals were on a couple house shows, and then boom, the regulars on the show. I was like, yes, there yeah, you go. cool. Kyle, what do you think about Madman Fulton? It's like somebody you'd hang out with. I'm going to be honest, Trent, I don't know much of him. Uh, I am not a big NXT guy. That's why I like getting J-Bone on the show, because from what I know, J-Bone does maybe about 1,000 podcasts per month. I think J-Bone watches WWE, AEW. uh, AEW hasn't started yet, Ring of Honor. I I know J-Bone is the type of guy like I can trust. I can ask him something, and he probably hasn't missed it. So I'm going to take J-Bone's – expertise here j-bone what was this guy's work like pre-impact is you know nxt you just mentioned mlw is there anything specific i should look for you know to watch you know just to get an idea about madman fulton 
Oh, I gotta, I gotta get this, this, this little glitch out of my head. The guy's name, the other guy that was with Fulton in MLW by, uh, that was with uh, Callahan is Leon Scott. That's what that guy's name was. All right. <clears throat> All right. And I kept screwing up his name. Anyways, um, <laughs> see, just a little nugget for you. Um, he was in NXT for several years. And he was supposed to come up to the main roster. Um, he was part of Sanity. Uh, Eric Young's I group. On the topic of Sanity, also, have they done anything with Eric Young? I feel like we can talk about that. This is an impact show. We can talk about our yeah. old for- former, former, former champion, team. Eric Young. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a damn shame. You know, they brought them up to the roster and they haven't done crap with them they've been on smackdown like twice within the last six months it's so sad it's me to hear that now and while we're on the topic uh let me confirm this from you uh j bone are they wasting ec3 as well is that true i keep reading that online i don't watch it but i keep reading that oh i it's every single week uh, my timeline is filled with why are they doing this to ec3 it's it's so sad he's he's one week a few weeks ago he was he was in a backstage segment um someone walked past him i forget who and he was standing there holding a spray bottle and a mirror looking in the mirror it's like this is what you're doing with a talent like ec3 I mean, I don't think EC3 is the best thing out there, but if they book him properly, this guy has the potential to be the next John Cena, in my opinion. 100%. And, it, and it's, it's, it's so freak. It's like, wh- why did you hire him? Oh, so no one else could have him. Um, How many other names can we put on this list? Don't even get me started. Unreal. Sad. That's right. depressing. But uh, back to Madman Fulton, though. Uh, I like the look. I think that OVE could use a big guy. And, you know, I, I like having that, the big brainless muscle. You know what I mean? Just like he's he's got that, like, that Mustafa look. You know what I mean? Remember how, like, the, in the gangsters, Mustafa wouldn't say much? Like, he was dangerous and big, but he just had that, that dopey look in his face. Brooding evil yeah. guy. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. He, and this is exactly, he doesn't have to say much. He said one word in the promo this past week when they were trying to, you know, he's like, it's like the, the doctor and the monster and they're making him, you know, they're making him into the monster. They're brainwashing him. And he said, he said one word, everything. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, let's, let's, let's carry on. We got a lot of comments. We got to get to a review. Oh yeah. Let's keep going here. All right. <laughs> Jamal Francis says, "Great job! It was shocking to see Jay Bone here. Y'all have so much chemistry with one with each other. He needs to be on the show more often." Well, we answer that here. I love the conversation on Eli Drake and Moose's new change. All right, Jamal, thank you very much. Jay Bone is here. More, more with Jay Bone. Thank you, Kyle. We got uh, Adam, Adam of uh, the Adam and Rose Show, our buddy on the uh, Impact Lounge. Here says a couple of things about the podcast and and the Impact Show. J-Bone has a really cool voice. Nice substitute for the K-Dog. So Adam's dogging you too, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. Why, why, are you, why are you spinning things? That, that wasn't a dog at all. He says, nice substitute for the K-Dog. Eh, it's a half a, it's a backhanded compliment is what that is. Okay, okay. it's a backhanded comment. I'll give it that. <laughs> he says, he also says, Ace Austin has a haircut like every lesbian I've ever met. Jesus, <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, oh. Uh, dude, uh, he keeps going. I got more from Adam here. He says, "You all don't. You guys don't give the commentators enough credits." Now, Adam is dogging us for not give, putting over the commentary team enough. He says, "Don has made Josh bearable." Ro and I had to review shows with Josh and Jeremy Borash. You guys never had it so good. And I'm sure that Devon did a re- retire the original TV title. And by retire, I mean just win it and never have it mentioned again. So, uh, Jesus Christ, Adam just, just dug into us here, Kyle. What in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, this guy says, great review of Canadian ECW, Trenton J-Bone. I've never heard. And he says, I, I love Rolando. <laughs> Impact is Canadian ECW, I guess. You know, I laughed. I laughed when I read that. I know I, I, that does stick out of my head. I laughed when I read that. And then I, I started that. That one stuck with me, and I started thinking about it, and I was like, "Holy, he's not far off." 
No, it, it really is almost like like a, I mean, a Canadian. It's it's, it's the little. I think it's a little funny thing because it's you know it is a company from, it's owned by you know people in Canada, but um, but yeah, I mean they are basically the equivalent of what ECW was doing because ECW had a little bit of everything. They had the hardcore, mm-hmm. they had the tremendous wrestling, a la you know Benoit Guerrero, uh, and they also had uh, cruiserweights like the X Division. And then they had, um, you know, some comedic stuff. I'm sure I'm, I'm not real up on ECW stuff. I know some of it, but, you know, it, it, it's it's a Kyle, great mix. Kyle, you're an ECW guy. What do you think? Does it kind of remind you of Canadian ECW, which is a nicer I ECW? Love I love the term Canadian ECW. It's perfect. That's a perfect way to describe it. And I'll even say, Trent, uh, I for a long time, and I'm saying – I'm going to get some shit for this. I'm saying even like <laughs> months and months back, maybe even before Don Callis and them even came into the company, even before Anthem even bought it, I have felt like Impact Wrestling has had a lot in common with ECW for quite some time. But because of some of their you know past mistakes and just the reputation that you know the IWC and uh, a lot of the losers on the internet like to you know. Uh, beat down into the ground but i've always felt like impact wrestling and ecw have a lot in common they're they're that that underground company that you know they seems like they always have their backs against the wall because of the big titans taking their taking all their roster members taking everything from them at every second but ecw would always push forward and find new ways to you know keep fresh and that's what impact has been doing and i mean just the smaller shows in the more gritty style production, just the the whole aura, the the way Impact looks on TV reminds me of ECW. And guess what, Trent? They're going to the ECW arena. They are. That's true. May uh, May 3rd and 4th, I believe. They'll be there. It's awesome, uh, though, because it's like a treat for ECW fans in the sense that, you know, they bring Tommy Dreamer around once in a while. They brought Raven around for that uh, quick little dip recently. You got Don Callis. They're like sprinkling things in there that, you know, favor towards the ECW fans. It's like a treat for the ECW fans, but they're not doing it the old way where they'd be like, oh, we're having another reunion. Like that dude, come on. ECW turned into a joke a few years ago because they kept having these ridiculous reunions every few years. It it just became a joke within itself. It it didn't mean anything anymore, but this is the right way to do it. You want to, you know, Show some love to ECW. You don't have to exploit it. You don't have to dig it up out of the ground and pretend it's still alive. This is how you do it. I like it. And I, honestly, Trent, I want to see Hat Guy and those guys in the crowd at the Impact Show. I hope they are. I hope those guys are in the crowd, man. Oh, that'd be cool. That, that would really make it for me if I saw Hat Guy in the front. Shit, and like Faith No More guy and all those guys, sign guy and all those guys. Hell yeah, man. All right, let's keep going here. A couple more comments, and we'll get on with the review. Uh, let's see here. Megedro says, Kyle, what the hell, man? Where were you? We need you. Look at that. With some love for the Kyle man here. Look at that. Hey, I'm, I'm a traveling man. I come and go as I please. Uh, <laughs> <let's>, <laughs> AK Infinity says, J-Bone in the house. Love that dude in his videos. Please that had that had that man on like once a month. All right. He's, he's back already, guys. There you go. But, nice. Uh, let's see what else we got here. What else? What else? What else? Uh, Christopher Rayburn. J-Bone needs to be a permanent fixture. You guys work well together. Awesome. Oh <laughs> uh, look at J-Bone. Look at this guy. Uh, Mir Neeson <laughs> says, Eli Drake, I'm guessing, will leave Impact when his contract expires in May. Let's talk about this one for just oh. a minute, guys. Thoughts? Oh. Hope not. <laughs> Kyle's, Kyle's taking it hard. He's Oops. a big Eli Mark. Okay, hang on. Here's, here's a tissue. Thank you. Thank you, Jimbo. Oh. <laughs> Tough. I, I, we can't lose Eli Drake. It sucks, but it's at that point now where you don't blame the guy because the company gave him a new deal and then didn't really do much with him. It's not that they didn't do much. I think Eli Drake has been a very uh, entertaining and important part of the TV show. For Yeah, he sure has. He sure has. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, you know, he he hasn't been pushed back to the top. And If he wants to go do other things, you can't really blame the guy. And Trent, I don't know if I'm crazy, but have you caught a vibe from Eli Drake recently that uh, he 
he seems like he's on his way out. He's been bitching about the intergender matches. Uh, like, dude, he, he often he did it again just yesterday. Today. Yeah, he uh he fucking started another shitstorm with about the Jordan Grace thing, and dude, he was ripping on her her fiance and between, all the yeah, marks and, between the lines with what he wrote. He wrote something where he said he explained why he thinks it's wrong, and then he continued to say that doing it and there's he's responding to an impact picture of killer cross and jordan he's saying doing it is going to stop you from growing and keep the product as a niche and i took that as a big shot at his current employer it was mm. odd man it was odd i i i keep yeah i'm like is he working i don't know what he's doing i really don't know you know some guys are just more he's a traditionalist I, Hey, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was gonna say. I I kind of compare that to you know some people like guys like Joey Ryan, and some guys don't like guys like Joey Ryan because they right. think he kind of stinks up the joint with his his dick jokes, his 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 big dong thing, his his uh, druids. I mean fluids, um, you know all all of his all of his shtick. Um, I, I like Joey Ryan, you know, I, I like a little sleaze in my wrestling once in a while. Um, it, it's, it's not all the time, you know, it's not like I see, you know, Joey on my TV every day. It's, it's here and there. And when it's sprinkled in, I'm okay with it. You know, so it's, it's a little bit of, a little bit of attitude era thrown in there and I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. You know, what do you think, Kyle? You a well, Joey I Ryan like, sleaze well, like guy. Would I like to see him in Impact more than United We Stand? Yeah, let's go with that. What do you say? Uh, yeah, I, I think the guy, I, I get people's criticisms. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, the guys, I'd say he's, he's not, maybe he's not on the level of the elite guys, but for a non WWE guy, the guy is a draw. The guy's got buzz. I mean, officially sponsored by youporn.com. Pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty big. No. The guy's the guy's an independent wrestler, and he just bought a house this last year. That says something. The yeah, guy, the guy's money. People like him. There, there is a market for Joey Ryan. I know some wrestling traditionalists. They're going to be pissed off and probably complaining about it on the internet. But they're going to complain about stuff on the internet anyway. I say Impact Wrestling definitely signed Joey Ryan. Why not? The guy has buzz. People like him. That is that is it would be a dumb business move. To not sign Joey Ryan because you're thinking, oh, that's not pure wrestling enough. That I think that would be a dumb business move, personally. Guys, a hell of an entertainer. I agree with Kyle. I agree uh, 110%. Bring bring him back, and I think there certainly is a place for Joey Ryan. I think the whole gut check thing. The, the try that again. The whole gut check thing was a uh, a, a failed, you know, shtick for a while. Uh, it's sad because they could have had so much more good talent um, mm -hmm. had they done that properly and kept it going the right way. And uh, no one survived that. And I mean, no one, sadly. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd say bring it back. I'm going to I'm going to play counterpoint to you guys. I I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan. I think it's too silly <laughs> for me. Uh, I'm, I'm unpopular opinion, I guess, but. It's not my cup of tea. I'm I'm more traditionalist. I'm not a big fan of the intergender thing, which is why with Eli to, and with his comments, I was agreeing with. Him. I I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's believable. I think it kind of throws even more, you know, more dirt on the grave of kayfabe. And I know kayfabe's dead, but at the same time, I enjoy. Uh, if I'm watching a show, I don't want to be slapped in the face with that. It's it's fake. It's a show. It's a fake. It's fake. Get keep keep some level of believability for me here and i just for me it's not my thing no insulting people doing it i just not my thing undead realm. Bullshit. Huh? they're in the middle of the undead realm what do you mean it, look again i'm watching a tv show <laughs> God, Jesus. i i don't want to see a, i don't want to see girls wrestling guys i just don't like it i don't enjoy it man it doesn't do it for me i just don't i don't feel it it doesn't it's like what are you gonna like jordan grace is tough but do, i mean do i really think she can beat killer cross i don't think so man you know but uh it's just me you know, it's people everybody's got their own thing but uh all right let's get a couple more in here guys a couple more in here what else we got i'm gonna, I'm gonna all right i got a nice one here i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna then a, a couple of uh short ones and we're gonna get out of it all right 
James St. Patrick says, wait, oh, God, he left a bunch. Let's see what he did. Let's start an order here. Okay. Apologies on posting again after the other two. Long, wait, did he post a bunch? Holy crap. I got to find the rest of his stuff here. Jesus. I can't find the rest of his. But, all right, we're going to start with this one here. Coming out. What's a, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, here we go. All right, let's, let's start with this here. All right, he says, uh, all right, apologies for posting again after the too long post, but I just saw the final chapter of the Allie and Rosemary story. I must say, well done, Impact. As a 44-year-old grown-ass man, and the ending to the story with Allie dying made my, my, my eyes water. I have never seen a storyline give a wrestler leaving a company such a great send-off. This storyline has been going on since last year. The payoff is worth the wait. Will someone please give Impact creative a freaking Grammy? I think he meant an Emmy. Grammy's for music. But that's uh, that pertains more to the episode we're about to review right now. But one more from James here. He says, part two, J-Bone J- is very observant. He noticed a lot of little nuggets about the show. Impact has a lot of talents, but no mid-card title that helps stabilize or help wrestlers really seem like a true champ. I agree with you guys. Eli is a flower ready to bloom. It could be politics holding him back. Don is so funny on the mic. It's I like when Don says thick thighs and a whole lot of ass. Or Sammy is <laughs> or Sammy is a vile, disgusting guy. Ace needs to go against a rascal or Petey Williams. Ace is Ace is Ace will be a great guy, great bad guy to take over Matt Seidel's spot. And last thing Ooh. I see, yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. Last thing I see is we have some stupid idiot giving all the Impact Lounge podcast the thumbs down. Yeah, notice we have we have like one thumbs down on everything. At least post why you don't like the show and stop hiding behind your refurbished laptop from Goodwill. Eating cold white castles in your granny's basement. Don't eat on shitty laptops, all right? That's a sensitive subject right now. Don't eat <laughs> on shitty laptops. But uh, no, I, I'm with that, man. Who is this mystery hater? Somebody is hitting our videos every week. And I know it's a person because it's just it's one, one click. Yeah. One. Maybe well, two. I don't mean to sound like cocky, but I, I, I can say humbly, we do a pretty decent job with our reviews and our listeners seem to enjoy it. They seem to Literally. come by and show love. I don't want to be that guy. I'm like, oh, everybody has to like us. Everybody gets haters. We all get haters. But I think there's one person targeting us, Trent. There is. There is. But uh, you know, J- I, I've, James, I've gotten a few lately. It's yeah. It's it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. James also says to that person, he says, "You're eating cold white castles in your granny's basement while hating on the best content for Impact News and reviews." I look forward to having an Impact Lounge Roundtable podcast with Trent, the mini draw, Kyle, the main draw, Basil, the butt street boy, and the Professor J-Bone. Great show, Trent and Jay. Holy shit, James St. Patrick. The, the Professor? Inter- that's that's oh, interesting. Yeah, it's hysterical how, like, Basil would come on and just, just get roasted by the people. He didn't really do that much wrong. This guy gets roasted by the people. J-Bone it. comes on, and J-Bone's an instant celebrity. The, the guy is loved. All across the board. What is it, J Bone? Is it that smooth voice here? It could be it. I don't know. Likeable guy. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the white. Uh, uh, who's who's Bear. that guy that does the jazz? Uh, Barry White. Or Barry, yeah, I'm like the white Barry White. Yeah, Bear, the white Barry White. <laughs> so, I I got a couple more things I want to touch on. A little bit of news. I can't say with a straight face. The white Barry White. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Uh, Eric DeHoff says, great review. Now, Eric DeHoff, Kyle, sent me a couple of autographed pictures of Amber Nova. You, may, you guys remember Amber Nova? She did a couple of impact spots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, within the last year or so, I think, yeah. Yeah. So, Kyle, here's here, here's how it ties into you. So, J- Eric sent me some, some photos of Amber Nova, but what happened was they got lost in the mail and never showed up. So, he contacted Amber and said this is what happened, and uh, she sent off two more. But here's what happened. Three days later, I get his original one that was three weeks delayed by the U.S. mail. So I said, oh, I got two sets of these, right? And so I tell Eric, and he's like, give one to Kyle. I said, but here's the thing, Eric. It says to Trent, love <laughs> Hammer Nova. And he says, give it to Kyle anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyle, I'm going to send you off two autograph photos of Hammer Nova that say to Trent. You can cross it out and put the Kyle. Actually, Trent, while we're on the air, let me say to you here on the air, uh, thank you for sending me that uh, Impact Wrestling calendar. I received that today. But you could have threw the Amber Nova picture in there. You know, you could have did that, Trent. Like I could have, but it leaves me room to send you something else out, too. How about that? I, I don't really want an autograph that says your name on it, to be honest. Nothing against you, but why would I want that? 
I don't know. I mean, it's Eric being nice. But uh, all right, two more little nuggets I got to drop here, guys. I'm gonna that I'm gonna get out. I want to thank the Chris Steele show. He made a uh, he made a custom Impact Wrestling intro to the TV show using my my song Revengeance, which is the opening song of the podcast. He used that in place of the current one, and it sounds badass. So look up the Chris Steele show, guys. He's on um, he's on Twitter. And I want you guys to look this up and and retweet it. Tag Impact, tag Kevin Sullivan, their producer. Show him because it looks cool as shit. But on that note, he's yeah, he's well, one of my regulars. He's good stuff. I was about to say, Trent. While you're talking about yeah. Hemi, I think you have a big uh, announcement to tell the listeners who might, you know, be out of the loop. Guys, I got I got some huge news. I got a huge huge news here. So as of uh. As of I was working this deal, I was working this all out for the last couple of months, but uh, it came to a head last week, guys, and it's official. My band Hemi is now the official theme song for the main event of Rebellion. So we're, our song Decay is used in the commercial for the Rebellion pay per view. They plugged our name and everything in it, and it's going to be it's the song of the main event of Rebellion. So all the advertising you're going to see for that main event. That's gonna be featured in my band. Dream come true, tremendous. It, it's uh, it was really awesome. I gotta, I'm gonna read a couple of th- uh, comments. Guys left me here on the lounge. Let me read those guys. I want, I definitely want to shout out these people for the awesome, uh, the love. And this is this is cool because Kyle, you called me last week, and you're like, hey man, congrats. I'm like, on what? Then you're like, dude, you don't know your your fucking songs on a commercial. And I was like, holy shit, I had no idea. So I didn't know when it was going to air. It just, uh, I signed the contract and I didn't know what was going to happen, but it worked out pretty good. But um, let me just read a couple of comments here, guys, if you, you can indulge me here. Uh, HSG Sabu says, Congrats on making Hemi an official impact commercial, Trent Dog. Thank you, sir. What else we got here? We got. Uh, uh, I like that, Trent. Trent Dog, huh? How about that? Let's see here. Man, that's that was some. That's pretty good. Wait, wait, I had some more comments here. I'm, 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 holy shit. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm. I'm losing my place. What else we got here? Guys, guys, sorry. Sorry about that. Well, whoops. He says, get the fuck out. Congrats on the rebellion spot. You'll need security at an entourage at every show I you attend now. That's oh, right. Oh, good <laughs> God, for damn you. It. Uh, Critical Sting says, oh, shit. Why am I hearing Hemi? Uh, why am I hearing Hemi's music on Impact's Twitter for rebellion ad? Congrats, Trent. Oh, That's good awesome. Uh, for what you. else we got here? There was one more. I think it was Bill Mack. He says, awesome show and great intro song. Hemi is awesome. Great addition this week with J-Bone joining the show. I hope Eli gets a proper storyline to get back in the main event and that he remains with Impact. I agree. Rolando's too funny of a character on Impact. He's always getting trashed while getting a scoop. Callahan versus Swan is the best storyline, in my opinion, today. They have a history and a lot of emotions. Truly, it has gotten better as the feud has continued. I just think with the new regime in, they have their own vision. I hope Eli's in the cards for them. will be a big loss to let him go. Totally, totally agree with that. So... Thanks, guys, for the love on the song. I appreciate that. Thanks for the love for J-Bone. J-Bone, these guys love you, man. Yeah, that's, that makes me feel like a million bucks. I really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. That's great to hear, that's <clears> great to hear man. We, uh, I think we got, you know, actually, I want to read one more to uh, uh, Ken Basquit. Left a lot of comments. I want to read one by him real quick, if you guys don't mind. He's uh, he's a great listener Edged. of ours. Too. Huh? Let, let, me, let me indulge Ken is the man. Ken's the man. I'm gonna, let me indulge him here. He said, I got to make a comment regarding the Gail Kim versus Tessa Blanchard feud. I've been saying this since the very beginning that this match can main event any pay-per-view, and I think that they should push for that because I think it would sell pay-per-views. However, however much shit do you think Impact's going to get once they pull this off? The E fanboys will say they're copying WWE's female WrestleMania main event when it's always been Impact Wrestling that has been first in women's wrestling. They had the first all women's pay per view knockouts knockdown, and the women's tag team titles that they used in TNA. I guess this is my comment on that. What's your guys' thoughts and opinions? I guess the whole argument is kind of stupid in a way because we just look past the whole women's aspect and look at look at them as athletes for what they are. And the reason that they should be in the main event on the card is because their stories are compelling and their in ring match would be incredible. Long comment, but basically, what do you guys think? about that like impact's been first uh for women's progressiveness in women in wrestling but uh if they do it now with a few that can really carry it they'll look like they're copying the wwe topically right right about now jay bone i'll start with you about this what do you think well if, if you think about it the 
the ladies headlined against all odds. You know, good point. Good. Point. I mean, it wasn't a pay per view, but it was still one of their bigger, bigger shows. Show. Yeah. And um, just because I remember watching the whole thing last week. And I'm like, when are we doing this Undead Realm thing? And all of a sudden, boom, when it popped in the last, what, five, ten minutes or whatever it was, I was like, oh, my God, th- this is going to be the main event. I, I was like, I was so happy for him. I was like, okay. <laughs> then I was like on the edge of my seat, like, because you you and uh, you and I talked about this trend. I'm like, okay, how, how are they going to do this? Yeah. And it, it, was, it was so, and we'll get into it more later, but, man, it was so good. Good point. Kyle, what do you say about that, man? You think, uh, should I go forward with it anyway? Well, I mean, what do you, what do you think where they're at right now with the women's, uh, women's stuff? You know what, Trent? Uh, that's one thing impact has always done well, at least since they introduced the division in what, uh, Oh six, Oh seven. Uh, Oh seven. Yeah. The knockouts division has always been, you know, what I love about the knockouts is there's there's a lot of variety in there. You know, they still get sexy. And you still have that. You have stuff like the Undead Realm. You have uh, stuff like Tessa, Taya. I mean, there's something everywhere in there. But what's so great about it is it's just natural. It, they, they've been consistent for a very long time. I Did you catch what BQ tweeted? Hey, party people, what's going on? I saw his tweet. Um, okay. in- yeah, I have it in front of me right now. I'm going to read it. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so... Uh, BQ, our boss, good old BQ, who is coming back, by the way. Uh, that shook uh, the internet to its core. BQ is making a return. He's coming back. Uh, hey, party people, what's going on? But BQ tweeted. I'm, I'm going to split BQ speak for us. BQ tweeted, Impact Wrestling had four storylines going with the women last night and also the Madison Rain vignette. WWE's Women's Revolution continues to revolve around the same four girls and Ronda Rousey. The rest almost serve as enhancement talent. I'd say Gail Kim is right. And then he follows up with impact does it very low key. The women in WWE do everything. And it's a dog and pony show by Stephanie McMahon. That's not equality. I couldn't say it any better than that. It's a good point. B- BQ still got the elegance. Hey party people. What's going on? Well, yeah, he's I, like- that, that comment about the dog and pony show and Stephanie McMahon. Like that's so true, man. That's so true. But impact wrestling to me has been consistent with the women since day one. And, uh, you know, I, that that's one of my favorite things that I love about Impact and one of the reasons I am proud to be a fan of Impact Wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they absolutely. have been very consistent. Yes. No question about it. No <laughs> question about it. Let's do it, guys. We're going to kick it off here. Against All Odds, March 29th, 2019. This is a big, this is a big one. It's in uh, Las Vegas. So let's, uh, let's start running it down. We opened up. LAX comes out. They call it the Lucha Brothers. And they brawl. They, they just start brawling. It's, the feud's boiled over. There's there's a rematch coming up. They're just boiled. They're, they're ready to brawl. They they hate each other. Security comes out. Brutal tables. You know tables whatnot. Chairs. They're beating the shit out of each other. And um, basically at the end of it, LAX stands above Lucha Brothers with the belts held high. So it's um it's LAX kind of getting their receipt uh, or giving the receipt on to the Lucha Brothers for the last attack. So it's a lot of back and forth here. And after that. After that was over, they're backstage, are super fired up, and they have challenged the Lucha Brothers to a full metal mayhem match at Rebellion. So they're super fired. So now we've seen this match a ton. It, this match has been going on in other promotions. Doesn't get boring because these guys are all great with each other. But what do you guys see happening here? And keep in mind the Lucha Brothers are they're not signed to anybody, not even AEW. They're just doing showcases everywhere. Do you see the belts changing at Rebellion in a Full Metal Mayhem match? Kyle, let's start with you on this one. Well, Kyle. that depends on the Lucha Brothers contract situation, to be honest. If, if I had that information, I'd be able to, you know, appropriately you, question. I'll tell you right now, they have no contract with anybody. That's that's the open, that's the insider info. They have no, they are on, They're on handshake deals with everybody. Everybody they're working for, they're doing it themselves. They're independent, two hundred percent. I mean, so, you work AAW who books them, so I do trust your word. Yeah, uh, you might have the accurate information with that. Uh, so you know what, Trent? Uh, I don't know. It's like, how long are we going to go back and forth with LAX and Lucha Brothers? You, right. You can't have potato with the belts forever. Right. I feel like I feel like the only team 
capable of taking it off the Lucha Brothers has to be LAX. And then from there, you can get it on somebody else. J-Bone, I'm going to kick you a different type of question here. No, if, I'm sorry. Can, can I just – let me just throw in one sentence here. Yeah, let me right. just – if you're going to do Monster Mafia right, you know, you want to start a team out hot, you usually kick them off right near that gold. Am, am I wrong? Not, not wrong at all. I will I will say that uh, they're in. They're in the company now. So, look, there's a lot that can be done here, man. So, um, But, J-Bone, I want to ask you a question here, man. Uh, if – LAX is taking these belts off because I feel like Lucha Brothers haven't really defended it against anyone other than LAX or feud with anybody else during this whole since winning the belts. If LAX take the belts back, who is the most logical team to put in immediately to feud with them? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, Current landscape. Let's go because Kyle mentioned the Monster Mafia, which is Josh Alexander and Ethan Page, but. Uh, Nothing's been announced. Oh, I'm, I'm glad together. you cleared that up because I didn't know who you were talking about. I was like, wait, do I not? know? OK, yeah, because I, I heard those two were going to be a, a, a potentially be a team. I saw a picture floating around Twitter and I, I heard they were close because they're Canadian and whatever the background. But I didn't I never heard the name before. But OK, <laughs> well, that's that was a name they used on the independence before they went solo before Josh's injury. So they were. Uh, they were the Monster Mafia, but uh, stay tuned. I'm not going to give anything away. I'm like I said, I was in Windsor, so keep watching. But no, uh, but yeah, based on current landscape, though, what do you what would you say? I I would say uh, I I would love to see a feud with um yeah. My my first thing is the my first thing I'd have to say is the Rascals. But you know what? Um, I love to see a real feud. That's not just kind of like, you know, kind of like uh, the, the the joke match of the show with the Desi Hit Squad. I I, I legit want to see them with a, a good heel, maybe semi comical, but I, I think they could really do a, a decent heel run with the tag championships. I, they just haven't been given like a serious run since their inception and i think it's i think it's time 100 you know? I, I might be biased I, like, kyle's gonna call me biased comical, i feel like you're gonna get that comedy directly from uh gama singh when you say semi-comical the, kyle, what's uh, manager? kyle I, I need you to do something here we uh you did you did you notice and i corrected you on this kyle when you were uh, just a young lad you know a couple of months ago but uh, is it going to be me or you to teach J Bone how to say the word properly? Who's uh -oh. you know I, I like that you're bringing this up because <laughs> on, uh, you and J Bone's uh, podcast last week, I think you missed it. Maybe it could be from the week before. I, I could be wrong. But there was a comment recently where somebody commented and challenged you and said that it is Desi, not Daisy. What do you have to say about that, Trent? I can, they can kiss my fucking ass because I am <laughs> I am as I am a guy with descent from that part of the world. The word okay, is well, Daisy. Whoever, whoever you are, I'm forgetting who you are. So please comment right now. <laughs> Jump in the camera. <laughs> we need to know who you are, and we need to you know talk about this a little more. Okay, I, so I, it's it's more of a long A sound. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like almost like saying they see. You know, like so they see. That's it. Oh, they like see. or like the flower Daisy. Yeah, almost, but like put a little more H in there. Okay, they see. <laughs> so it's uh, like I said, I there was a uh, Rohit had That's a interesting. yeah Rohit had a had a thread going on, and uh, with some guy who was talking about how his name was being mispronounced because it's actually Rohit. It could uh, it actually not it can be Rohit or it could be Rohit. And I said, hey, while you're at it, why don't you get Josh Matthews to start saying they see the right way? And I'm like, you can even explain it as easy as they see, and. Uh, I was talking to Roy about it in uh, in Windsor when I was up there, and he goes, "That was great, dude. That was like the perfect way to explain it." So, um, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, I've yeah, I've never seen that discussion before. I just, I, I, you hear, you hear, does he hit squad? I, I haven't heard it any other way. That's interesting. Okay, don't worry, J Bone. When I first came across this young young chap, Kyle, he had no idea what what a what a Daisy was or where they came from or anything about him. Next thing I know, he's over in Jamaica, Queens. Having uh 
having South Asian food. He's eating, he's eating Pakistani food and Arab food and Indian food. And he's like, dude, Trent, I love it. I'm an honorary Daisy. And I said, you sure are, man. Welcome <laughs> to the club. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the family. We do. He's we break getting, down the walls. He's <laughs> he's getting tans every week. <laughs> oh, Kyle Browner than me. I want to get a turban. I said, Trent, I want to get a turban. Why can't I have one? I said, you can get one. I said, that, that's not my people. I'm, I'm the next country over, but go ahead and get your turban, man. It's all good. <laughs> It'd be pretty tight. I think Kyle looked good in a turban. Kyle, I think you pull it off, and especially in New York City where nobody looks twice at shit like that. Go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'd have no issue putting it on that ever. Got that. Keep going. Wisconsin might have a problem. If Jay Bone showed up in a turban, you know, walking around Wisconsin, it might be they might might get a couple of looks. But in New York City, I don't think anybody's gonna give a fuck. You know, <laughs> he might get away with it. But uh, don't worry, Jay Bone, we'll get you on the we'll get you on the Pakistani food soon enough too. All right. <laughs> I'm but, all over it. <laughs> but there we go, guys. So that's that's the match coming up at the Rebellion. It's gonna be full metal mayhem. But then we went from there, guys, to Disco and Scarlet. So Scarlet's debut. Uh, they have built this story like crazy, and uh, Disco and Scarlet. It was uh, she was good, man. She called him Turkey Boy. That was a gobble gobble chant. She went hard off the start, man. She went nuts. Disco. Oh, is that I what they were chanting? They were chanting gobble gobble. Oh, I didn't catch. I'm like, what the hell were they chanting? Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> he was um, he did the turkey suit back in uh, November. Right. But, right. It was a gr- actually. I this was a great match. I mean, Disco didn't hold back shit, and she was selling like crazy. I don't know if you guys caught this. She was like oh, she really did. selling. She like, did. I, I fell for her. I was like, holy shit, you know, <laughs> like a poor girl. But uh, they were great. She won off with a power bomb off the top rope, or like a drag drag bomb off the top rope. Uh, it was great. Both of them uh, did fantastic. Kyle. I want to start with you. Did this also kind of what minus the crazy blood? This reminded me of that uh, Bill Alfonso and Beulah match from ECW. That was really classic. You remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, Def- definitely similar without the uh, without the blood. Thousands of pounds of DNA uh, yeah. all over the ring. Besides yeah. that, but uh, no, hell of a match, Trent. We knew we were going to get Scarlet in the ring. And I, let me say, Trent, I actually predicted on the show when, when we were guessing, taking guesses, yes. Disco was one of my guesses. Show, he was. The show. I remember that. You're right. Yeah. Give my props for that. But, uh, no, yeah. a really, really great match. Uh, I, I had a good time with this match because uh, one of my buddies is an old WCW mark, and he doesn't watch any wrestling. He actually hates wrestling. Part of his hatred towards wrestling is the death of WCW, period. Like, he, he really just it, – it's it's a sensitive subject for him. But uh, I sent I him this match, and let me tell you, my buddy enjoyed wrestling for the first time in, like, 20 years just because he saw Disco out there doing his thing. It brought him back to Nitro. He told me, seeing Disco is a treat. And he said he'll give Impact the try off of that Disco and Scarlet match. You know, it's weird. You send him something with Scarlet Bordeaux, and he comes back talking about Disco more than Scarlet. I don't know. If you're <laughs> that. But, uh, Scarlet, man, she yeah, she did a great job out there. Give her her props. I, I know the way internet wrestling fans are. I'm sure there are people cr- critical of her performance, but I think she killed it. I think she did a great job. Uh, I think she's got a really, really bright future in the industry as a whole, Trent. Yeah. She, she's she's one of the biggest rising stars, man. Scarlet is is on fire, dude. I'm happy Impact got her. Uh, J Bone, any thoughts on this one? What did you think of this match? The rake of the back right before the power bomb was like the icing on the cake. It was like I was like, God, how how is she gonna beat him? Yeah, yeah, but but you know he he it's like it's a, never call your spots before you do it. He's like, I'm gonna take her in the corner and give her the. 10 count he's you know doing a you know that like he's gonna hit her hit her yeah. 10 times and so i was like oh no see there you know no you, you screwed up <laughs> trent missed this jay bone but you're the nugget king so i know you got this uh before the match when disco was uh talking shit on the microphone did you catch the becky lynch drop that he oh uh, yeah i caught that, that. <laughs> Yeah, he oh goes, yeah, what did he say? He said, um, "I'm I'm going to prove that a woman can't be the man around." Oh here, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's funny. I I I've, I've, be there. I I've talked. Yeah, I remember him saying that. Now, now that you say that, yeah. Um, 
I, I've talked about that on my podcast and, and I was like, cause that's when I really started watching uh, the WWE again was right in the middle of Becky Lynch's um, feud with Charlotte. And I was like, the man, the man, everyone's talking about the man. I see this all over Twitter, the man, the man, what the hell is this, the man? And so I asked my viewers, I love my viewers. They, they talk to me. They're good. They're good to me. Most of them. Um, I was like, somebody please explain this to me. I'm, I'm a little ignorant on this. I'm like, I don't understand why she keeps calling herself the man. And then someone explained to me that it's because Charlotte, like her father was the man. And when Becky beat her, she became the man. And I was like, really? That <laughs> I chuckled a little. I'm like, I get it, but it's I, loose. It's I, weird. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, whatever. We go from that gentleman, we go to the back and, uh, Melissa Santos is there. She, she finds Johnny and Taya. And Ty basically hypes up her match with uh, Jordan coming up. And then Johnny mentions how he's going to have some low-carb popcorn because you don't get 75 abs eating carbs. So uh, a little hype for the match later on this evening. This, they show they cut the disco walking back from his match. And he's getting mocked. He's getting mocked by the knockouts. They're laughing at him. Kyle, it's like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, they're, they're mine. They're pointing and laughing at disco. It's like my it's, it, poor guy. All he, all he wanted to do was prove a point, man. Shit. Poor this guy. Great, Gil Gilbernetti. Gilbernetti. Gilbernetti, bro. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we cut from that, guys, to a really cool thing. It was a promo for Josh Alexander. You guys see this video? This was uh, super cool. This that was, was, was badass. The music, the, uh, the scenes, the imagery. I think, dude, I got me hype for Josh. Kyle, did you see this? Yeah, dude, Impact's production, man, let me tell you, you can't deny it. Impact is killing anybody else across the board when it comes to vignettes. Without a doubt, they have, the, they have that gritty, cool production. I'd put Impact's production against WWE, Ring of Honor, MLW, easy. The people it's behind fantastic. the scenes of Impact right now are killing it. But yeah, this is, this is you know, this is the type of shit I love. This is classic old school, get you hyped up with the vignette. You know, it, it's, it's kind of like an 80s, 90s thing that, you know, I feel like it's a lost art nowadays. But I Big like, time. you know, Impact keeping that alive, the vignette like that, the mysterious, you know, animated type vignette. Absolutely. I mean, well, why not? You know, it, it, it creates a little hype, gets you a little little uh, excited for what's about to come out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i all for him, man. Definitely keep doing it. But Josh is cool. I'm a big Josh Alexander fan. Can't and wait. I don't know anything about Josh. That's the thing. Like, it worked for me. I, a very uh, interesting vignette, and I don't know anything about the guy. I know of Monster Mafia, and I know he's had a run on the indies, but I never really watched any of it. I have you know, no clue. So I'm excited to see Josh Alexander. I'm hearing nothing but good stuff about him. Can I, t- can I share a quick story about Josh Alexander with you guys? You guys have like yeah. two minutes. So I, uh, he, you know, he was an AW regular. He's a former AW champion. So I picked up Josh Alexander at the airport, but then it was also Matt Riddle. And uh, Phoenix and Ray Oris and I think somebody else I can't remember. Maybe just those three. Yeah, I remember what a crew. What a crew, right? You just you telling me you got you got my people in the car is what you're saying. Basically, yes. <laughs> this was a car. I, know this story's going. I can't remember who the other guy was in the back. There was there was four in the back. I just can't remember who the other one was. Maybe it was only three. But uh, I remember some riddles hanging out the window. We're on. We're by Midway Airport, south side of Chicago, and we're stuck in bumper to bumper. Josh is like a very, see, Josh, he's a very uh, decent, quiet, kind of a quiet guy, but he talks, a very intelligent guy, uh, very calculated conversation. And the other three are just like party animals, right? <laughs> Josh is chilling, we're talking about business, we're talking about, you know, merchandise and travel, things like that. Have you a good talk. Riddle's hanging out of the back. We're kind of, we're, at, we're bumper to bumper. Some guy looks, leans over out of my car, or out of their car to Riddle, and he goes, "Hey man, you want to buy some heroin?" And, oh my god! And and Riddle's like, "Holy shit, man! You get is that fucking easy here? Holy fuck!" And I'm like, "I'm like, please, Matt, do not buy heroin out of my car, please." <laughs> and he's like, "That's fucking crazy, dude! Like shit! <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like a fucking drive-through, man." <laughs> And then, uh, fuck it, I got, I got Phoenix going like, hey, we got to drive faster, bro. We got to go faster because I got to get ready. 
So I got fucking Matt Riddle trying to buy drugs. I got Josh Alexander talking business and wondering what's going on in the bag. I got Ray Phoenix telling me to fucking hurry up. <laughs> like, it was great, man. What a story. Josh. In the car, see if the guy's got any weed. You got, you got the wrestling's biggest stoners back there. Matt Riddle, Phoenix, you know, the legendary <laughs> wrestling hotheads. It's awesome. Yeah. I love Riddle. I love Riddle. I can totally picture him doing that in the and his the, the face as he got... holy shit, man! Is that re- what the fuck, dude? Oh wow, like, man, uh, it was great. It was Kyle. You should have been there. <laughs> great road story. Story. Yeah, no, no interest in heroin. But great road story. No, he, he was interested either. He was just shocked at how easy it was, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, we go from that, guys. Tessa's there with Santos. She basically just hypes up Gail apologizing. She's, you know, Tessa's always angry. And she's saying, Gail, but Gail better apologize. You know, she's yelling at her and shit. So uh, we go from that. Tessa's in the ring. And she's demanding Gail. Uh, she's telling Gail, hey, I demand an apology. She says, uh, so then Gail's like, fine, I apologize. And she admits that she resigned earlier that day from her position. And then T- Tessa's mocking her. She's laughing at her. Ha, ha, ha. And Gail says, I resigned to come out of retirement to kick your ass. And then she starts whooping Tessa. So it's uh, Gail Kim versus Tessa announced for rebellion. Gail Kim out of retirement, guys, officially no longer an agent. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I think it's such a good passing of the torch match. It's the best of two di- different generations. Uh, Jay, I'll start with you on this one. What do you think, man? No, uh, this this one's been simmering for a while. People have been talking about it a lot too online, and um, yeah, I, I I can't wait. It's it's just another you know cog in the what do, you, what do they say cog in the wheel of uh, yep. you know Tessa's uh, evolution on the show and just rise to greatness. Um, yep. She's been champ, but she hasn't uh, faced a lot of uh knockout legends and i think um this 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 will be a great chapter in her story here yeah that's yeah tremendous. what do you think kyle cool yeah that's right i gotta say uh yeah i'm I'm very excited for this match i, I for a long time here on the podcast trent i've said to you we got to build towards testing gail we need testing gail but i gotta say You've got some balls, Trent, saying that this is going to be a passing of the torch. You got balls predicting that because how do you know that, you know, old uh, Gail Hogan isn't going to drop the creative control leg, brother? You know what I mean? And how do you know that? Oh. Oh, man, I'm up the dub on this one. How I'm, do you know? saying, I'm saying the match happening itself is a passing. Passed. I'm thinking that I say the match itself is a passing of the torch is what I'm saying. But I, I do like your analogy of the uh, – the uh, the Hogan the Hogan leg of ego. <laughs> Get Hogan, brother. You don't know when Gail Hogan's gonna drop the creative leg, brother. You know, she's got that creative control. She's on the creative team. You know, write herself right into that. But no, in all honesty, uh, you know, jokes aside, I, I think this is gonna be a passing of the torch. It only makes sense for Tessa to beat Gail, but you never know. You never know, bro. That swerve is always there around the corner, bro. Always, bro. Always, bro, bro. He is uh, the swerve is the swerve is always creeping around the corner. We'll see. It's good to see it though. It was fun to see uh, these two finally square off, man. And get some, get some, get a little physical. So excited about it. Big fan of Gail, Kim, and Tessa. So I should, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, you, I'm gonna. You, I gotta go. ask you guys. Do you think there's more to this besides just the match? Do you think like this is like building to an actual? Like she's actually not going to be part of the backstage scenario anymore, or do you think they're just saying that? I think it's a one night on retirement is what it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's my prediction on that. Um, yeah, definitely one off. I would guess. Yeah, uh, we got a little reveal here that the returning superstar is going to be Madison Rain. She's coming back. I want to get your guys' thoughts on this, and I want to pause for something. So. Uh, Kyle, I'll start with you on this one. Madison Rain returning in 2019. What do you think about that? Because it's uh, not, a lot. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, is there's always a place for people of the past, you know, veterans to come back in and elevate the younger talent. I don't want to see her come in and get pushed and, you know, be champion, but I'd like to see her come in and put over some younger talent, you know? 
Yeah, I could see that, man, for sure, for sure. I, I just, uh, it's the whole thing. It's like you could have taken, you could have had so much more though. But why? You know, what do you think, J Bone? I, I'm not jumping up and down about it, but I, you know, I, I think it's, I think they'll, I don't know, I think it'll be okay. All right. I, I, don't, I guess I, she's done a lot. A lot's already happened. It's like we've, we've seen it. I don't know how much new you can get, but we'll see yeah. where it goes, man. So um, I want to pause right here. That first hour, I watched it on Twitch, and dude, I felt it was plagued by too many video packages and way too many. Um, <coughs> uh the melissa santos cut-ins to me are killing the vibe and i like melissa santos but the cut-ins in between because like dude they go from this exciting bright lit arena and it's like in her dark bedroom and you hear the baby crying in the background <laughs> and, and she's always having audio issues and she's there's a delay and it's kind of like not she's trying to be engaging but the setting doesn't allow for it and i'm like and it kept killing my buzz and i'm I had some people watching first time, uh, and I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like, I don't want them to think this is it. Like, where I just you get this high energy, then it kills the buzz and com- constant commercial, 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 uh, or like, you know, a little promo or, or backstage. It's like back too much back to back stuff, but not enough action. And I was like, man, I'd rather at this point I'd rather I know they're trying to engage the crowd, but dude, I'd rather they run like HD commercials in between. For like rebellion and shit, and then do it because it just was such a buzzkill for San- with Santos. Uh, Kyle, you told me how you watch. J Bone, did you watch on Twitch or how do you watch? I always watch on Twitch because I'm I'm one of the very few cable systems that doesn't have the Pursuit channel anywhere on its package. Yeah, I don't either. I'm mine. So I have to watch it live or <laughs> or nefarious means like uh, young Kyle over here. But by, by the way, I, I gotta ask, uh, how old are how old are you, Kyle? I'm just curious. Take a guess. <laughs> you should guess. <laughs> yeah, well, let's make a game out of this. Make a bit out of this. Take a guess. Get, Take guess a guess Kyle's age. I'm going to say, I'm going to say early 30s. Whoa, Kyle. <laughs> I, I take that as a compliment. I take that yeah, as a compliment. I, no, I am, uh, I'm at the ripe age of 24, my friend. He's oh, a young okay. man. I, I, I was going to say late 20s, early 30s, because I didn't want to pick you as too old but i was just okay that's fine he's an old soul though that's the thing uh, the reason i click with kyle he's an old soul man he's uh he's only 24 year old i know who watches Svengoolie. you know like he's he's an old soul oh that's that's choice that's awesome <laughs> yeah. i don't oh, watch yeah. him but i know who he is so i respect it i grew up on elvira so i totally respect that oh good old elvira i, <sighs> I met her i met her once the but, mistress uh, of the dark ah she looks great <laughs> Kyle, uh, Kyle, yeah, Kyle, you're a, you're unique. You're a unique, unique soul, my friend. You're a very unique soul. But I, uh, the Twitch cut in. I think we got to improve this. We got to be it. We got to be at a set or something. Uh, I don't think it's hard. Set up the background. Have somebody do it. It could be anybody. It doesn't have to be Melissa Santos. I just don't dig it. A dark bedroom. You hear a little baby cry in the back. It's like ah, this is kind of. It's odd. It's odd to me when you're coming it's, from such. A, it's getting better. I think it's not. Yeah, I know, Trent, that this is only on Twitch. Now, I'm going to be honest. I broke my laptop going on the, the dirty, dark web uh, armpit of the internet to find Impact Wrestling. And what a the cut that I watched, it was from uh, Spike 5 over in the UK. Shout out to all the UK listeners watching Impact on Spike 5 uh, within uh, legal means. But uh, there, were, there were no uh, Twitch cuts. I didn't see any of that. Uh, the, the show... Uh, to me, uh, you would have enjoyed it a lot more if you didn't watch it on Twitch, I guess. So, Trent, maybe you should, uh, you know, use your GWN and uh, just wait for the upload in that case. I might have to. I might yeah, have to do it's, it. It's a, it's a straight hour and a half, then. I I like the interaction, you know, in the, in the chats. But, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I feel like we need to be a little better with, uh, with what she's doing or, or light it up or do something because... I don't know. I, I felt like it kept killing the mood for me. Come commercial, it go from an action packed match to this like slow thing in her bedroom. It's like, oh come on, three minutes of this, you know, like give me some energy here. I gotta say, I, I appreciate the shout outs that they do when they thank people for subscribing on Twitch. I, yeah. I actually got a shout out from uh from Josh. It was one of the first times they were on Twitch, and it was my 
two months, one month, two months, whatever it was. Um, I subscribed and they, cause they're listing off names of people that subscribed to Twitch. And they said, uh, J bone 51 50 just, uh, subscribed. And, and Don Callis said, J bone love that name. And I was like, Oh shit. That's Man, awesome. Callis put you over. <laughs> I know. I was like, Oh, there's, there's my two seconds of fame on a, on a Twitch, uh, you know, Twitch showing here. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Take it wherever you can get it. Right. As a subscriber, don't you get less commercials as a subscriber? Isn't that the deal with Twitch? I, I yeah. just don't use Twitch because I work Friday nights. I can't catch the show live. Yeah. Well, you you still get you still get their cut-ins, you know, that, that, which does not count as a commercial. They you still get their cut-ins. I just want their cut-ins to be a little more compelling, a little more exciting. You know, give me a little more energy on those things. Sometimes they th- sometimes they throw in a match from the uh, depending on like if they're having technical issues. Sometimes they'll quick throw in. Uh, part of a match from a, something from the GW network, something, you know. I, yeah, I can do without those. I mean, I, I get why they put them in, but do put in like modern matches, though. Don't keep putting old stuff in, like put in the modern stuff. Yeah. Further the current stories, if anything. But um, all right, so that was about the halfway point. We go uh, right from there, they go to the OVE, the OVE cam, and they're like brainwashing Madman Fulton. Like they're going through like some clockwork orange type of shit, man. And uh, he they they bring the camera up to him and he just says everything, and uh, it was cool. It was really cool. I don't know if you guys got the same vibe, but it was very clockwork orange with the way I, the way it felt. Yeah, see, I I'm probably one of the few people on a planet that I've never seen. I know the movie you're talking about. I've just I've never seen it. Kyle, you're a sick bastard. You ever see that movie? Yeah, you know what? I actually uh, got that movie uh, on VHS tape from the local video store when I was about uh, 11 years old, and it was very disturbing for the young 11-year-old mind. Let me tell you, that was a disturbing movie. Uh, definitely a, a classic movie, I'd say. I'm a big fan, but uh, no. They, they uh, let the, you. They let well, you rent that. Hey man, I, there there wasn't a lot of supervision going on uh, in the Kyle house as a kid. I I I was watching South Park in kindergarten. That's a fact. That's no, a I fact. mean like they like they let you go out of the store with that. Yeah, I mean like as a kid, you know, I I would pick the video. <laughs> and my dad, he didn't care. He let me watch whatever. Yeah, he would get me uh, you know, Mike Myers, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, all that stuff back in the day. Wow. There you go. Explains it all. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's hardcore yeah. as you feel like the onion of Kyle but no uh, this uh, promo had a lot of uh, shades of clock or growing just, just them trapping him down and brainwashing him was just awesome yeah that's great um, so then we went guys we had Jordan Grace taking on Ty for the knockouts title this was Jordan after winning the number one contendership uh, against Tessa so um Jordan, Jordan really busted her ass on this one. I had you know written down here. She uh, she's really working hard, but dude, I felt like Taya was boring in this one. I think Taya did not. I think her style is like just kind of boring. It's it's slow. It's not explosive. It's not really dynamic. Um, Jaybone, what do you think, man? Are you a Taya fan? Do you you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I mean, I think she's changed over the years a little bit. I mean, I think she's her her body type has changed a lot. Um. And, and and no, that is not in reference to me saying, you know, calling her fat or anything. But I, I know she was like, like, I've been a fan of her since the the first. Uh, no, I take that back. Excuse me. Second season. Sorry. Second season of Lucha Underground, which is, you could say, like between four and five years ago. So she'll, she's changed a lot in that time. Yeah. Um, but I've seen her do amazing things over the course of the last four or five years. Between AAA, the Independence, Lucha Underground, um, it, it, she's always been a favorite of mine. So it, it, she might be slowing down just a little bit because of like a few different things, like body type. Um, it, it, she's gone through a lot mentally too. She's been going through some stuff. So physically and mentally, I I, I take that all into um, account. And um, I think also you could throw a percentage of that in is that she's working different because she's a heel. So I think everything taken into, you know, that it, it kind of makes sense. So what do you think, Kyle? You think she uh, you, you're a Taya fan? You like what she does, what she brings to the table? You know, what? 
I, me personally, I like to be critical of the television show in general. I don't really like to critique people's in-ring performances too much in that sort of way. Uh, I think she's a hell of a performer. I think she's a... Uh, does a great job. Trent, you were complaining about her being a little boring and slow in this match, but maybe take into account, you know, she's on a hot heel run. She Maybe she's working, you know, a slower style just to make her opponent, you know, look better. Jordan Grace, getting Jordan Grace over, you know? Think about that maybe a little. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But, you know, in this match, Taya claims that she injured her ribs when she uh, missed her moonsault, and then Johnny comes running out to check on her. The referee counts Taya out. That pisses off Jordan, but uh, she takes the win, but she's not happy about it. And then uh, while he's there, Brian Cage's music hits, and uh, out comes the machine. And then Johnny uses Taya to block, and uh, as he's doing that, Killer Cross comes in and attacks Cage from behind, and the uh, main event is up. Killer Cross taking on Johnny – or, uh, sorry, I keep on saying Johnny Cage. No, Killer Cross <laughs> taking on Brian Cage. And um, good match, man. This this was like two hosses. This is like two hosses, man, just going at it. Big oh, yeah. dudes, yeah, you know, big dudes, muscles. And um, Cage is on fire to kick it off, man. He really starts it starts it hot. And um, they did a bunch of cool power moves. You know, there was some hammer locks and uh, there was you know various suplexes. They worked the arm a lot. Uh, Cage ended up hitting a supl- a moon salt. At one point, off the second rope, which was nuts. I uh, did not expect that. But um, Cross hits the uh, Doomsday Saito slam, but Cage kicks out. So there was a lot of power moves in this, guys. A ton yeah. of power moves. Um, the way, way it wrapped up was Cage is about to score the victory when Johnny and Ty come out the ringside. Johnny distracts the referee while Ty hits Cage with a low blow. Uh, Cross connects with like another Doomsday Saito. And miraculous, but miraculously, Cage kicks out. But the referee still called for the three, and he asked for the bell to be rang. So it was a screw job finish. Cage kicked out of two. Ref counted three, and and everybody looked kind of confused, looked kind of wonky. Even I was like, "What the hell just happened?" It took me like two watches to really see it. But um, he uh, he screwed Johnny. I mean, I'm sorry, he screwed. I screwed, <laughs> screwed Cage. He screwed Cage, and uh, it's like, it's under, no. Did, when you guys watched it, did just did did it seem off to you? Did you guys at first? I thought I'm like, did they fuck up? And this is the cover for it, or was it done on purpose? So the second time I watched it, it seemed like it was more done as laid out. So Kyle, what do you think? I'm gonna start with you on this one. Do you feel it? Uh, did they fuck it up, or did it feel like they they did it on purpose and it just was? It was just kind of how it was. I don't think they fucked it up. I think, you know, it was just uh, a bit of what we like to call as wrestling fans a clusterfuck segment. Yeah. Because there was just a lot going on. There was a lot of people out there, a lot going on. But no, I don't I don't think they fucked up. Okay. Yeah, I, on my second watch through, it seemed more more on purpose. At first, I was like, well, are they botched that? And they keep it in. But, uh, but on the second watch, it definitely seemed better. It was definitely was a cluster, though, no doubt about it. J-Bone, what do you think, man? Do you um, how do you think this one ended? You got to watch Cross's face in this one, and that and it's it's really hard to say. Um, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going to guess that there's more to this because <clears throat> Johnny Bravo is like one of the the the, the straightest guys. He, he, you know, there's there's no BS in Johnny Bravo. He's he's a good ref, and. When Cage kicked out, he definitely kicked out. I I, I rewound that yes. too. He kicked out and Cross set up and threw his hands up like, oh, God. Right, right. And then he turned around, looked at the ref, and then turned back and faced the camera and had a shit-eating grin on his face. Yes. So it's like, like he knew. Ah, yeah. something's going on. So yeah, I guess I'm I'm not giving anything away from Windsor, but um, I, I see where you're coming from. Gotta make this point here though, Trent, Trent, sorry to cut you off. I have to make this point, Doug. Once again, give give uh, Kyle Stradamus over here his props. Uh, let's think back. Maybe months ago, not even weeks, Trent. Months ago, didn't I randomly suggest here on the podcast? They should turn one of the referees heel. And then we talked about Nick Patrick back in yep. the day. And, yep. and and I said it should be Johnny Bravo. Didn't I say that months ago? It was yes, it was a did. random thing I just 
was brought up on the show that Impact should have a heel referee. Yes, you did. You did bring that up. I cannot take that away from you. You, you another, definitely another mentioned that. Kyle Stradamus. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Stradamus. <laughs> <laughs> but after that match, after that match, guys, Johnny beats down Cage with a chair and uh, really takes his arm out. So there's a lot going on here. I mean, they're really hyping the main event here, man, which I'm all for because my song, Decay, as I mentioned at the top of the show by Hemi, HemiMusic.com, is featured as the main event's theme song. But... Good for you. Hey. <laughs> but, uh, all right, guys, we, we closed this show out big. This was this had everybody talking. Uh, it was a matter of the undead realm. And Rosemary had to go back and get Allie from the undead, undead realm um, to, oh, so to save her soul. So she dragged Allie to the undead realm to get her soul back, is what I'm saying. Right. So they go out there. They're there. Even Kira shows up. Uh, even though Rosemary told her not to, mm-hmm. but basically, uh, they Rosemary's there, Allie's kind of off to the side, bunch of freaks, bunch of monsters, you know, a bunch, couple of lucha underground guys, as uh, as was I was told, but there was a bunch of freak shows, just it was Rosemary versus the world. And if she won, she gets to uh, save Allie's soul, but if she doesn't, she's screwed. But uh, she fought hard, man, all she could do, but. At the end of the day, Sue Young kills Allie. And Allie ended up dying in Rosemary's arms in an extremely sad segment. And thoughts, comments on this one? Kyle, let's start with you on this. Well, I, I think you're a piece of shit for not mentioning uh, the great Kevin Sullivan at all or Jim Mitchell in, in your uh, setup there. I, 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 think, I think you should go back and do it again. How dare you not mention <laughs> That's a good point. I can't believe I, that's it. I'm looking right at it in my notes. And I, I honestly skipped over one of the biggest moments in Impact history in quite some time. For old school, you know, territory fans, that sort of thing doesn't happen. So, so let, me, let me set this up here. At one point, uh, the battle's going on. Jim Mitchell, who is uh, the modern-day devil for our generation, is holding Kira at knife point. And as things settle, we see, the, we see him, who was referred to as him, for a week, start walking towards the ring, and it's like the devil himself. It's got to be him. Removes the ha- the hood, and it is Kevin, goddamn Sullivan, the the devil, the, the the guy who did the devil gimmick all throughout his career in every promotion. He was the devil, and he he's the devil in Impact Wrestling. Mind blowing, man. Crazy. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. But I was gonna get to it, Kyle. I thought you punked me out. I was gonna build up to it, but. Kevin Sullivan's the devil. So seeing Jim Mitchell and Kevin Sullivan at the same time on the same segment was surreal to me. I Priceless. thought that was cool. Priceless. <laughs> Priceless. But, man, Sue Young killed Allie. I mean, she got killed off. I mean, they they, they treat it like a TV show. They killed the character. Uh, what do you guys think, uh, you know, uh, about the ending? And we, we talked about a little bit, J-Bone, before we got on the air. It's, uh, it's a very cartoony finish, but it's different for wrestling. So what do you think about that, J-Bone? Um, I also got to mention that there was a nice little throwback to season uh, three in uh, from Lucha Underground. Um, or wait, was it three? No, four. Damn it! I'm I'm a, I'm an old fart. I apologize. The last season, whatever it was of Lucha Underground, it was four. Um, Luchasaurus was part of their roster over the course of the last season okay. and and Taya and Johnny in a throwback to I guess you could say like a, a temple of doom Raiders of the lost Ark t- kind of thing um got into a fight with Luchasaurus on Lucha underground Taya slayed him chopped his head off with a sword and sprayed green stuff on the screen so I thought, Rosemary killing Luchasaurus in a matter of moments with the what, machete, whatever she had, or a butcher thing, whatever she kind of blade she had, um, killed him in the ring, and the green stuff hit the screen. You know, little 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 bit of special effects there. Uh, I was like, I was like, oh, priceless. The only problem is she killed him, which means we're probably not going to see him again in uh, Impact Wrestling. But I would love to see him back. See, I thought he had actually signed 
with Ring of Honor because he's been making some appearances there too, along with some other guys from Lucha Underground. So, but I was like, ah, damn it, they killed him. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. We'll see though. I mean, they got they got a kind of open contract negotiations with these guys, so you might but, see yeah. him back. You know, you yeah. know. Yeah. Let me make a back segment here, Trent. Let me, can I go on a quick little rant? Yes, can I can I rant quick, Trent? Go for it. All right. So let me just say this. I loved this. I've I, I praised the undead realm here on the show week after week. I've praised it. I love it. Now, I'm the type of guy, I'm just not traditional with my wrestling. I, I like some entertainment. I, I like some fantasy-based stuff. Uh, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, right? It's not for everybody. But let me tell you, if you're sitting on Twitter bitching about the undead realm and this ending about how Ali was killed off. If you're sitting on the internet bitching about this, you can suck my dick. Now you're entitled to your opinion. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, but you can suck my dick. Oh. Is that cool? I mean, you can respectfully suck my dick. You're entitled. Well, well there goes, uh, well, Hey, he, he tells it like it is guys. I guess no, so. No holding back. The podcast is no longer monetized, Trent. As if you keep that up, it won't be. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're on the we're with J Bone on the non monetized list. We're done. Uh, we're still getting monetized <laughs> for now. J Bone, how do you get thrown off? I uh, it was when uh, what was it that uh, that 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 Logan guy did that stupid shit, and then yeah. all of a sudden YouTube, anyone under a thousand subs got unmonetized. And I'm 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 creeping up there. I got actually uh, by, by, by I don't know how I don't know how I've been in a bit of a dry spell as far as subs lately. But uh, when I was doing the raw uh, go home thing to WrestleMania, miraculously got four subs off of that show tonight. Don't ask me how. Nice. So I'm I'm trying to get up to a thousand. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. You know, I, I just need to stop looking so much. I look every fucking day. <laughs> yeah. J-Bone, people. Please follow J Bone, support the J Bone. The campaign we're doing with love, the love is the J Bone. Um, what? but yeah, they're showing love. This, this whole ending segment was, was priceless between the, the, the music, the little bit of special effects, everyone involved, friggin' Kira Hogan tossing the sword. To Rosemary, her doing the spin around took out four dead bitches in one swipe. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> bitches been dying on impact. Oh my god, oh, um, that. <laughs> <laughs> just so entertaining. And it's like, I like it. I'll, I'll always, you know, compare this to Lucha Underground because I think that's kind of where they get some of this from. Um, considering you know, half of their roster has been on there. Uh, <laughs> Give Lucha on the ground its props. Now, this is total nonstop impact. We really don't ever do that. In fact, we'll probably never, ever do it again. I'm talking about giving other wrestling promotions props. But Lucha Underground definitely went in a direction that nobody else had gone in before. And, uh, you know, they, they paved the way for stuff like this. And uh, in a weird way, Lucha Underground definitely uh, impacted the wrestling business. No doubt about it. It no did. It's, it's a great show. I hope it comes back, but it's I'm you know up in the as, as, as the months go by, I'm kind of slowly just coming to terms that it's not going to. But it's one of the best awesome fantasy stuff, though. And I want to know from the loungers right now in the comments: Are are you against this sort of uh, fantasy based, you know, really over the top uh, type of storylines and wrestling? you more into traditional you know the pure wrestling let us know right now in the comments i, I want to hear from the loungers on this me I, I i'm full entertainment bro you know all about yeah, the storylines bro there you go so get out loud just let us know man leave some comments don't forget leave comments throughout your listening of the show too some yeah. some of you guys already do that i'd like to you know really fill up those comment sections so as you're listening to a certain segment leave the comment and we'll kind of we'll kind of follow along with how you watch the show and uh, give our feedback on it. But uh, I get people that do that on my show once in a while, or or someone will actually private message me while they're watching the video, and I'll weird. be like, 
and they'll be like, ha ha, yeah, I love that too. And I'll be like, awesome. What? (laughs) 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 Uh, Good times. Good times. Keep me guessing. uh, Keep him guessing, man. Keep him guessing. But goodbye. To- I like to jump in his comments once in a while. That's that's what I like about the J Bone videos. You know, he sits there, he's live, he's reading from the comments. You know, don't don't private message J Bone. Get in his comments. Yeah, get in there. Yeah, yeah. slide into my comments while I'm live. Slide into the DMs. Press but- press one for hot talk with J Bone. And they don't call it smash this podcast for nothing, baby. <laughs> yeah, there you it- go. Can I can I tell you how that uh, how that name came around? That not too many people know this. I had booked that. Now, are you familiar with Lucha Underground or or some of the characters or all of them or? Easily enough, we're, 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 you know we're we're like casual fans. Okay, yeah. all right. I had booked someone for my show from Lucha Underground. He, I, I don't know if I should say who it is. Yeah, I'm go still, ahead. Okay, <laughs> screw it. I, I booked Famous B for my show. Okay. And he, he basically uh, blew me off. What a scumbag! Okay. And uh, I was pretty upset because I did a whole promo video on my YouTube channel saying, hey, Famous B's coming to, uh, to uh, you know, um, Smashes to, uh, I think it was destroying kayfabe at the time. I was doing another thing for someone else and I took it over, but he was supposed to come to the podcast and, uh, he blew me off. I was really upset about it. Um, I think he's still one of the best talents on Lucha Underground. Don't get me wrong, but I was really pissed off about it. And, and I was, I was, I was angry and I was trying to come up with something aggressive for a title for uh for a new podcast when it took a different direction shortly after that and i was like uh nah you know what yeah it's it's, it's uh we're gonna call it smash this podcast and it's because that's where i came from it's because famous b uh you know blew off jabo no kidding cool screw famous b <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. Well, what, what cool, a, man. And the podcast on. What's that? What a down note to end the podcast on. Yeah. Well, it ended on a down note, Kyle. We, we ended up with Allie dying, and they played the saddest damn song you can imagine, man. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I got, I was, uh, I was getting out my, my tissues for that one. But, uh, yeah. uh if, if I could, uh, maybe brighten it up a little bit. Sure. Um, you had asked me, in the, in my in the messages leading up to this, uh, to uh, to pick something particular. Oh yes, 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 Jay Bone. I was thinking that throughout this review, I didn't want to bring it up to you, you know, in case we missed over or something. But uh, yes, I I asked you, Jay Bone, if you would be the man and pick our dummy of the week this week. Ah. You got one. You got I, one, Jay Bone. Got... Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on, Trent. Get your dummy butt nap. Okay, the the, the app that doesn't exist anymore, by the way, folks. Only Trent has it. Eli Drake pulled that app down. Trent has the dummy button app. Ooh. All Ready right, get around. All right. they, here, take it, J Bone. Take take over. <laughs> My dummy for the week. Now I, I had I had one earlier in the show, and then I changed my mind about three quarters of the way through it. I hope that's okay. Sure. Um my original one. Was Glenn Gilberti? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're actually going to get two for the price of one in the show. I, I kind of changed my mind because then I was like, ah, no, you know, I think someone's maybe a little more deserving. But if you want two for this show, I'll give it to you. All right. I say Taya. Taya, dummy of the week. Yep. For uh, for 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 making the because I wanted a, whether it's a a, a cheat finish. Or something. I wanted a real finish to this. I was excited for this Taya Jordan Grace match, and okay. she just she was holding her ribs. She's like, "Oh, I'm hurt." She 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 pulled the Johnny. She pulled the Johnny. She scooted out of the ring, and he walked her away. And I was like, "Oh hell no!" 
Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> but for that, J-Bone, she is a... Dummy, yeah. There you go. Hell yeah. Dummy, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I'm with you on that, man. So, too bad, Ty. You are the... Dummy, The week. So... Yeah. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah. On that note, gentlemen, that's it. That's against all odds 2019, guys. Uh, nice long pod. Kept them all tied up pretty nice, and hopefully we, we, we kept all these guys with us. But uh, that was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed it. So let's get some plugs here out of the way. Let's get that going, and uh, we'll take it from there. J-Bone, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter is where I do most of my promotion for my podcast and stuff. I got a Facebook too. I'm not on there as much, but Twitter, I'm on, uh, uh, J bone 5150, uh, J a Y B O N E 5150. And then, uh, the YouTube channel J bone and, um, where I do all my smashing for smash this podcast. There's an Instagram too. just look up smash this podcast. And, um, also, uh, part of a couple different networks, part of uh, wrestlingwithwrestling.com, where I throw my my MLW and my uh, uh, Women of Wrestling stuff and a couple other odds and ends on there. It's just, I was putting Lucha Underground there on there, but nothing currently. And I'm also uh, part of the uh, Wrestle Addict Radio, where I throw my uh, impact reviews on there. And that goes on iTunes and several other uh, audio formats. I just found out recently that we're also on CastBox and, um, oh, gosh, where? Oh, I was excited about this one, Spotify, yeah, as Spotify of a few cool. weeks. Yeah, I was like, wow, we're on Spotify now, too? So Anchor FM, iTunes, Spotify, and several others. So Yeah, there you go, man. Well, I got it. You are a podcast for my friend. You are in bed with a lot of websites. That sounds like. In fact, I had a message. I met a private someone. Private messaged me right before I did my other one earlier. Someone private messaged me and said, "Hey, how would you like to do some co promotion?" I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I'm getting wore out here." <laughs> <laughs> and that, now you're making multi appearances here on the Impact Lounge. Just another yeah. notch in your belt, you podcast. Yeah, you. You've done I'm, two. I'm, I'm a I'm a podcast slut. What can I say? Yeah, I don't know. I'm an two. old slut. <laughs> <laughs> two appearances on Total Nonstop Impact, Javon. How do you feel, man? That's that's oh, something. Man. I, I'm fe- I'm feeling the love, guys. I really I really do appreciate it. Um. I've been wanting to work with you guys for a while now. And uh, I, yeah, I just, um, I can't say enough. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, Jay, tell them, tell them where they can find you, bud. Where can the people connect with you? Where can they, you they hear that, all your... Huh? I, I just did it. Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. Shit. My, my, my senility <laughs> is rubbing off. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, I am so, uh, I meant to say Kyle. My bad, guys. Kyle, where can they find you? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so all the loungers, uh, if, if in case you're living under a rock and you're not following me already, because I am the draw around here. Oh, around good here. for Trent you. Knows it. you know, Trent, uh, well, let me hear from some Sammy Callahan. How's Sammy doing? Could, could you, you get, could you Sammy, get him Sammy, can you get in here real quick and tell Kyle what he is? Kyle, what's going on? This is Sammy Callahan. You might call me the draw on Impact Wrestling, but you on the Impact Lounge are the draw. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank Trent you, is nothing. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you, and you all wait, 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 wait. Me. You are everything. You are everything. And Trent is nothing. Okay, you, I'm out of here. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Sammy, yes, thank you very much. Oh, holy wait, shit, I, that was good. <laughs> Sammy, I don't know why you're in my house at 2 in the morning, but uh, all right, get the fuck out of here. All right, anyway, Kyle, where can they find you, man? Shoot me a follow on Twitter at KL underscore TNI. I'm on there always tweeting, uh, you know, let's, let's chat, let's interact, uh, you know. The DMs are open, folks. They're open. Slide into Ooh. it. Slide it send over. me pictures of boobs. Yeah, send them, send them, <laughs> Lounger, send him pictures of boobs in his, in his impact. K, KL underscore TNI. 
It's kind of like yeah. promise I'll shave mine first before I do that. <laughs> say woman boobs. I didn't say woman boobs. I said all boobs. All send, boobs send. welcome. <laughs> he loves all of them, guys. No, he doesn't discriminate. Let him, let him uh, go. Let's let him go right, to bed. On. I got my enough to think. Hang on, guys. You can find me at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find my band Hemi Music uh, at Hemi Music on Instagram and Twitter and HemiMusic.com, H-E-M-I-M-U-S-I-C. Check it out. Check out the song Decay. It's the official song of Rebellion, Impact Rebellion. Take a listen to it. It's on, Links are all up on there, and the commercial is at HemiMusic.com. Take a look at it. Uh, we'll have it on our YouTube channel after the pay-per-view airs. We can't do it just yet. But Congrats it's on, on again on that, man. Congrats Thanks, again. Man. Huge deal for me. I've, I waited f- 15 years. I've been trying to get get a song in this company. And uh, big shout out to Kevin Sullivan um, for, for making that happen. Oh, and then Eric Thompson of uh, Impact's production team. Thank you guys for that. So uh, connect with us there. And the show, guys, you can connect with the show at We Talk Impact on Instagram, and Twitter, and Facebook. Just type in We Talk Impact. Comes right up. Uh, or you can just type in the Total Nonstop Impact Podcast. Comes right up. You can find this show wherever podcasts are found. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and YouTube exclusively on the Impact Lounge channel. This is also available on Podbean, on Impact Lounge. is Podbean. Take a look there. And uh, connect with us. Rate, review, subscribe. Guys, please, if you have an iTunes account, jump in there and get it, give it a nice rating. Please go ahead and rate it a five. It, it'll help us get seen by more eyes. We want to get seen by more Impact fans. So if you got a second, please jump in there right now. It takes two seconds. But, guys, that's going to do it for us. Connect with us. Let us know what we're doing. Leave comments. Am I forgetting anything, Jay Bone and Kyle? Anything at all? Uh, rest in peace, Allie. Rest in peace, Allie. Thank you, Allie. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk to you again. After United, we stand. Get, the, get that whole report up and then the next next week's uh, impact out. We'll talk to you next week, guys. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Total nonstop impact. Yeah. Impact talk for impact fans. Yeah. Hosted by Kyle and Trey. Oh, no.